Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm looking at a pen from Pilot. This is a pen I've been looking at for a while and uh, finally um, bit the bullet and picked one up. Uh, I got this uh, a little while ago and I've been sitting on it for the review uh, because I it's a different pen to a lot of other Pilot pens. Um, and uh, you'll see why in a, in a minute. Um, but yeah, let's, let's let's start talking about it. So the pen we're talking about today is the Pilot Falcon, as you would have seen. Um, also, it used to be known as the uh, Namiki Falcon. Uh, now I'm just going by Pilot. This is the packaging it comes in. Standard uh, Pilot, well, this is the packaging it comes in in Australia, at least. Uh, standard Pilot, you know, leatherette clamshell box, comes with a cartridge. Um, and information and stuff underneath. It comes with a converter. Yes, it comes with a converter, and that is to be celebrated any time a pen does. Uh, it comes with a CON70 converter, and this is the pen itself. So this is the uh, black version, black with rhodium um, uh, trim. It's The Falcon is interesting because of but primarily because of its nib. Um, and so we'll show that straight up. So the nib is designed to sort of be reminiscent of the Falcon's beak, uh, which is very, very cool. It's got a nice unique feed on it. It is a cartridge converter pen, as I said. So I've got it with a Con 70 converter, which it comes with. Not my favorite converter, just because of the cleaning. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to clean, but uh, in comparison to you know the Con 40s, 50s, stuff like that, it is a dream. So as you can see, I have this in the soft fine. Now, soft does not mean flex. Get that out of your head right here and right now. You do not flex these nibs. It is a 14 karat gold nib, but you do not flex them. They are soft, so there's a little bit of bounce, a little bit of spring perhaps when you're writing, but they are not flex nibs. Let's talk about the pen and uh, do writing sample pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. So top of the pen is a plain chrome cap. Uh, you've got the clip which uh, has this nice little sweep to it. The cap swells out to a nice chrome uh, rhodium band there. This is just a sticker. I've kept this on for the review. The pen then uh, travels down uh, and then we get another chrome ring or end cap there. The cap unscrews uh, in one and a third uh, turns, almost one and a half, uh, and reveals a nice section, slim but nice. Uh, very, very smooth threads, two more silver rings there and then another silver ring towards the end of the section, and then of course that pilot, uh, beautiful pilot nib there, uh, which is the soft, fine uh, falcon nib. A little bit sort of closer on that nib there, you can see like the little, how it sort of is slightly bowed there on those shoulders, but it sort of tapers continually, um, and it is a very fine nib. I like the fact that it is actually truly a fine. The pen is made of resin and steel, and there are a couple of different color options uh, that are available of the pen, uh, more in Japan than there are particularly here in Australia. Um, it's good weight pen, it's brass lined, uh, so it's it's got a nice sort of um, solid feel to it. As I said, it is a cartridge converter pen, proprietary cartridge converter, uh, and it's all beautifully made as you would expect from Pilot. Uh, Pilot do things well, they've been around for a long time and know what they're doing. The cap does post and it posts nice and securely and quite deeply. So the length of that feels quite comfortable in the hand, but there is a lot of weight back here at the end of the cap, uh, which you do feel uh, on the back of your hand. I'll talk about the weight in a minute when I uh, talk about the dimensions of the pen, but you do feel that weight back there. If you hold it back on those threads, they're smooth enough to be able to do that. Um, it's not a super big nib, so I do tend to hold it slightly further back on the section, which does tend to rebalance out the pen just a little bit. As I said, this is the soft fine, and it also comes uh, in a, 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 a soft extra fine and a soft medium. Uh, so you can get uh, a couple of different options there, but this fine is very fine. Uh, and as I said, it's not a flex nib. We are not talking about any kind of flex. We're just talking soft with a slight line variation because of that. Time for a size comparison now, just so I'll pull up the Lamy Safari. You can see it's not a dissimilar kind of length. It's actually just about a millimeter shorter than a Lamy Safari, which is you know quite good in this format. Uncapped, you see the nibs are a similar sort of size. Uh, obviously very, very different, different metal makeup, but also different properties. Uh, but the pen is slightly shorter than the Lamy Safari. 
posted. It's still shorter, but I think it comes out pretty well in the mix, really. This is a good size pen. It's a good sort of standard size pen, a good everyday writing size pen, which I'll get to with the writing sample in just a minute. So now for the dimensions of the Pilot Falcon fountain pen. It's 139 millimeters long, so it's a good length. 127 when it is un capped and that's a comfortable length in the hand I think. I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find people whose hands are so big they can't use this uh, unposted uh, but when it is posted it is 156 so still not super long and for people with particularly big hands even this uh, the weight of that cap on the end there won't be so much of an issue. The section is uh, from 9 to 10 millimeters, so as I said, slightly slim, but certainly not a small section. Uh, and the weight of the pen is 33 grams, with 19 in the body and 14 in the cap. So as I said, when you put the cap on, you're putting a good proportion of the weight uh, on the back of the pen there. Time for a writing sample now with the Pilot Falcon. As I said, this is the soft fine and it is a 14 carat gold nib the ink i have in this is pilot aroshizuku yamabudo this was actually also the very first ink i put in this pen and i enjoyed it so much that uh, after putting uh, a load of uh, lamy black through it just to really get a sense of the pen knowing how that ink plays um, I put Yamabuda back in it because I just think it is the perfect ink for this pen. Beautifully saturated, you get a bit of a sheen on the right paper. It's really lovely. Let's do some writing. It isn't a buttery smooth nib, but that is not the point of the nib. And I'll just do a quick writing sample, like, no, it's not even a writing sample, but it's a little bit of writing with my right hand. Etc. So it does have a little bit of feedback to it and a lot of that is the property of uh, the nib. Quick writing. Not designed to be legible, designed to test the flow of the pen and you can see it's got excellent, excellent flow. It is fairly wet. Uh, also, look at that ink, isn't that just beautiful? I, lo I love this ink. Uh, it's been a long term a favourite of mine. Um, but it's nice and wet, uh, and now let's just, uh, I'll just do some reverse writing. It's not designed for that, so it does dry out very quickly. Um, but that's not what we hear with this nib. The Falcon nib has always sort of been designed as like a soft, talked about as a soft nib, semi-flex, whatever you want to call it. I want to take that out. I don't want to say that. I want to say soft because that's what it is. It's not a, it's not a firm nib. Like, it's not a needle. Like, if I just grab, you know, the Diplomat, uh, uh, excellence A2 here, you can see like when I press down, there's no bounce in that nib whatsoever. Whereas at least when I press down with the Falcon nib, we get a little bit of bounce there just on the end of the tines. You can see they don't open up a whole lot, but you can get like a little bit of line variation if you're careful with this pen. If you're careful with this pen, please do not over push these nibs. You see far too often these nibs just get sprung. Um, but you know, if you were wanting just that little bit of little bit of line variation in your writing, you could do that with this. It is soft, it's springy, you feel it as you're writing. Um, and that for me is what also makes this a really interesting everyday writer. It may not be the smoothest nib, but it is super reliable with a great flow. I've never had any starvation issues with this, even with the amount of ink it's putting down. Um, but it makes your writing just a little bit interesting. Uh, and that is just if you get that little bit of bounce, particularly your right-handers will find this more than left hand, left-handed writers, based on the nature of the angle in which you're drawing the pen down the page. Um, and so, you know, when a right-handed writer put, pulls that nib across and you get that little bit of open up, we get a little bit more line variation than the left-handed sort of pulling it the other way. It's harder to get that uh, to open up. 
And so when I write with it, I just get a really lovely, consistent, fine, but like quite generous line. And that's what I really enjoy here. So let's talk pros and cons. First con, uh, and this is very personal. I don't like the Con 70 converter. I think it has a good capacity and that's probably why a lot of people like it, but it is a, it is a, a not a fun converter to clean. No converters are fun to clean, but this one particularly, it just takes extra time. Uh, and there's lots of little places for ink to sort of, or like remnants of ink just to sort of hang around. Uh, the other thing is in Australia, there's a huge price markup on Pilot, as there are in a lot of countries when you buy them away from Japan. The Japanese prices are considerably lower. This is obviously their home country where they're aiming to keep most of their sales if they can. But the US in the price, the US price of this is about 180 US dollars. The Australian price is about 350 US dollars or as low as 260. Now 260 is closer to the conversion of 150, but 350 is a huge con up jump from 180 US. So we are talking a big markup. That's about the biggest con. As I said, those prices, 180 US dollars or about 300, 260 to 350 Australian dollars for this pen. I think it's actually a pretty good price. You're getting a gold nib, you're getting a pen with a very reliable, from a reliable company with that writes beautifully. Um, there's, you know, you're, you're buying a piece that you know is going to actually work and last. Um, the other thing is that nib is beautiful. I love that. Um, as I said, it is a pilot pen. Pilot has, you know, there's there's a there's a lineage there. There's a heritage. There's you know sort of a good history there that you can draw upon as a pen user, as a pen owner. Um, I also really like really like the balance of this pen unposted in my hand. It feels very nice. The weight uh, is very much sort of leading towards the nib, uh, you know, and it's centered and it feels nice and it allows for a good everyday writing. And this is my last major pro here is the fact that this pen for me is a wonderful everyday writer. Um, it's because it is reliable. It's, you know, it's a rugged pen, like it's quite strong. Um, I don't feel like I'm going to, you know, putting it into my bag, like in a, in a, in a pen sleeve or something, I'm not, I still don't feel like I'm going to damage it. Um, and it just is so consistent and beautiful to write with and a classy, elegant sort of almost sort of, um, classic sort of design and some interesting like little details in like the angles on the clip and things like that. But generally speaking, it's a black pen that, uh, doesn't scream at anyone, but that nib, that nib is just sublime. So that was the Pilot Falcon. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button. Please get in touch if uh, you would like to, uh, you know, if you've got products you think I should be looking at or if there is a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing items for review. I would really love to hear from you. It's your support that makes this channel possible. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.